Well, good night, good night, good night to you. First of all, let me apologize for the late start. You know, every now and again, we have some technical difficulties uh, way beyond our control. But it's a good night, and I'm happy that you are here and you were waiting for us. Uh, tonight, this... 2023. But you know what? I want to tell you that this year, when many, many of us expected that 2023 would be a really good year for us, what we have started experiencing is lots of wickedness, and it's wickedness in high and low places. And, and I'm referring here to some things that would have happened over the, the couple of days that we've started this year. It's only the 11th, and we've had, we've had murders, we've had accidents, we've had robberies, all kinds of things, drive-by shooting, all kinds of things happening in, in just 11 days. And so this should be saying to you that Guyana needs prayers, more prayers and plenty prayers, because we've got... Um, you know, the good book says that we're not here fighting against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what's spreading across this land. And it's causing a dark cloud to be hovering around us. As a matter of fact, we've got two doctors of doom. And they are casting that dark cloud upon us as Guyanese people. They're dividing this nation. They're continuing to divide this nation. But you know what? As a group of resilient people, we are going to triumph. We will triumph. So let me take a little time off to say happy birthday to those who would have celebrated their birthdays um, just yesterday, today, the day before, and, and the days before we weren't here. Happy birthday to you, and I trust that God is going to give you the strength to continue to, to grow more in grace and to have more love for humanity. And then I want to... Um, at the same time, while I'm celebrating uh, birthdays and I'm happy that persons are one year older, you know, we've got some some issues that we really need to highlight. And we have um, a pedestrian from Rose Hall Town was killed by a truck, um, Victor Alert, age 38. Uh, folks, we need to be careful on our roadways. Drivers, pedestrians, we need to be careful on our roadways, you know. I, I always hear one of my colleagues say in every morning he's reminding drivers that you have a driver's license and, and you know you didn't get that driver's license sorry for your um to kill but you got it because of your skill so let's use the five c's when we're on the road and, and ensure that we save lives and so it wasn't only in rose hall town but we had also in wickenham where a 16 year old is dead and his friend, a 21-year-old, he is critical in hospital after they would have crashed into a tractor and a trailer. We need to be careful. We have to stop drinking and driving. We have to stop speeding along the roadways because you know what? We are going to get there dead. So let's take some more time to observe the five C's as we go along the roadways and encourage others to do that. And then if that wasn't enough, we had a young lady who stabbed their partner to death. Um, after they had a little misunderstanding. Um, I'm hoping that the, the folks at the Ministry of Social Protection, uh, that they're listening to what is happening, they're following what is happening, so that they can have more programs, more outreaches to, to talk to persons. And you know what is happening? People are under pressure. Things tight. And so the frustration keeps building up and, and, and people just can't uh, take what is happening. So just over a little squabble, persons are losing their lives. Um, so we have a mother and we have a father who's dead and the mother is going to be locked up and the children are going to be left without parents. It's a sad situation, but we've got to work on it. All of us, let's talk to our folks. Let's tell them violence is not the answer. If you get into a squabble, walk away. For peace sake, walk away. And let's save, let's save lives. And just about not having, um, after not having enough of that, we saw in Region 3 at Podroin, a domestic worker and a taxi driver, they were, they were um, busted this morning with cocaine and ganja. Um, what a way, what a way. Again, 
things tight. Mind you, I'm not promoting this, but things tight and people not getting jobs. And those who, those of us who are having um, our little jobs and we have our little farms and we have our cattle that we, we, we're rearing and, and we're trying to get an honest dollar, that is being taken away from us. And so people are frustrated. People don't know what to do. So they're finding all kinds of other means to, to earn a living and to feed their families. We had a budget uh, last year, I think it was about $44 billion, just about in the, just somewhere in December there. And, and I'm wondering what has happened to that money, those monies? Why can't we use those monies to, to um, develop our, our country and, and to, to enhance the lives of our people? Well, when you talk about enhancing the lives, I know our public servants and teachers, they're there and they're still waiting because everybody else were, were honored, everybody else was looked at, their services were acknowledged, and the teachers who create all professions, they're still waiting for their call to be answered. But you know what? We're not going to talk too much about this because on the screen, I'm sure you're seeing our topic there, which says uh, we're talking about, we're going to continue to talk about what happened at Mocker. You remember last week we had Miss Chevron Eastman. This was the young lady who spoke about um, why she was very hesitant or why she's hesitant to, to remove from where she's at. And, and then we saw all that happened there. And if that is not wickedness, then I, I don't know what else, because I don't know what explanation we can give for an excavator to go down there, not only to demolish homes, but to, to smash every case of beverage that Ms. 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 Eastman had there. Um, destroying zinc sheets, destroying furniture in homes, breaking bridges and not allowing the folks to, to, to pull up some of what they have there. Um, I don't know what explanation we can give for that. But what I know is that we have some people who are very false when they talk about one Guyana. I'm not sure which is the Guyana that they're talking about that is being one. But tonight we're going to talk to a young man. Or um, after we would have watched this clip, we this young man. Hey, let me try to find a seat tonight. Yes, operator, thank you so much. Now, the thing is, um, we're hearing that this the, the folks there were squatting. Some of those people would have occupied those lands uh, since over 30 years. Nobody thought that they were squatting at that time. 
And even if they were squatting, they're human beings. Eh? And, and that's not the way we treat people. You can't tell me you love me and you treat me in that way. The thing is, it's not a case where the people were not prepared to move. The people were prepared to move. But you can't tell me that my home that is worth $8 million and my stocks that I have, they're worth whatever, $9 million, $8 million, $7 million. And you're telling me that I just need to walk away and accept a $7 million or $3 million from the government. That should not, that can't be right. So don't tell me that the people were squatting and as a result of them squatting there, you had a right to do that. That's absolutely wrong. You know, I, I don't want to say the things that I really want to say here because, you know, it's disgusting. Every time you have to watch this, it, 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 it boils up something in you. Because these people are not animals. These are bona fide Guyanese citizens. And even if they were squatting, that's not the way to treat them. How do you explain? How do you explain some of what was done on Thursday, what was done on Friday, and what was done again on Saturday? How do you explain that? However, we have a guest in, store, in, in studio with us, and I'm going to allow him to introduce himself to us, a fine young man who's here with us. Uh, good night to you, sir, and how are you? I'm not okay. I, I, I know I that. I said that I'm okay, and I'm not. They will say I'm okay, I'm lying. Mm -hmm. And you are? Mark Gordon. Mark Gordon. And so we have Mark Gordon here with us, and Mark Gordon is from... Mark Gordon is from Mocha, Arcadia. Mark is one of the young men whose home was demolished um, last Thursday. Um, Mark, what is your occupation? Self-employed. Mark is self-employed. So what, what do you do for a living? A lot of things. My lifestyle. My lifestyle. I sell ice. I do ice business. I repair water pump, grass, cutter. I do a lot of things because I didn't intend to work with anybody. So I do a lot of things to elevate myself. Okay. So what was the main activity that kept you that kept you going in, in Mocha? Pigs. Pigs. So you were rearing pigs. Yeah. How many pigs you you were rearing? I had about 200 pigs. 200 pigs. Yeah. And, and if you were talking a value, what, what value would that be equivalent to? It was nearly 10. 10 to 12 million. 10 to 12 million dollars. So you, you rear pigs and, and you, you kill and you sell, yeah. or people would just come and buy a whole I, pig I from do you? All. I do sell and I do scale too. Because I got customers come and buy it, scale and sell. Good. So you, you had um, 200 heads of pigs valued at about 12 million dollars. <laughs> Um, I know they, there were some talks um, between yourself and the Ministry of Housing officials, I think it was, uh, where they said to you that you had to move off the land because they were putting this road. And mind you, let me say to our viewers, the road that we're talking about is by no means where these folks are living. They're not interfering with any road project. Let me say that to you. They are not interfering with the road project. And I need to let you know, too, that the removal of these folks from where they were living is because these people are highly wicked. Because you know what? When that road would have been completed, those lands there would have become highly priced lands. But you know what? We'll wait to see who are going to occupy these lands when that road is completed. But as we continue our conversation, Mark, you, you rear pigs to sell and, and you kill and sell and people would come and, and buy from you just like that. Um, what happened on, on Thursday? I know we were there on Wednesday. We were there on, 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 on Tuesday. What happened on Thursday? Thursday, I was at the back cooking pig food. And... I know it's hard. I, I know. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I set the people running and come in the back and tell me that I'm market of getting pig off of the land because then people killing, people pig and burying it, broke down pig pen, killing and burying. So I, I couldn't go out to see what's going on. 
Ale até duas, as chaifu que as mochas que eu tinha, ou tinha a arte, before them meet by me. So that was on Thursday? Yeah. And so you thought that, well, after, so your home was broken down on Thursday too? Yeah. No, Thursday, the home broke down. And I think it's Friday. So they didn't trouble the pig pen on no. Thursday? Mm -hmm. So you thought that your pigs were safe? But I thought that at least they were coming to you. Mm -hmm. And associate with we and give we and do all they have to do and give we will land and everything. So you could move the pig and put it somewhere. So I didn't move the pig. So tell me something. We are hearing from, from, from the propagandist and all the propaganda news that they're, they're, they're spreading there that they, they have homes that they, they would have already that would have already been prepared for you folks. They have the keys there. All you people had to do is to go and pick up the keys. The home them have the torn kiosk, it wasn't for we. Okay. It okay. was for we stay in till when server the house. What we build in, finish. Oh, so you, you notice, viewers, all you were hearing, and, and I, I remember just two days ago, a senior, um, a past president said to me that correctly, y'all are being unfair. Of course, he was a PPT president, a former president in the, in, who served under the PPT. He said, correctly, y'all are being unfair. These people, the government provided homes for people, give them homes and money, and they just don't want that. They just keep telling the government that they want more monies. And here we have Mark saying to us that all that was happening is that they were loaning them a turnkey home until their homes were, were completed, the building of their homes were completed. What? Why saying that you're giving me six million for Bill Marker home? You get a contractor. Contract to take two out of the what four million could do for Bill a home in this crisis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What four million could do? So, did you have anybody to come and, and, and do an evaluation of your home to say how much your home was worth? No, I didn't allow nobody to come and do anything because I don't think that we're going to get the land still because mm -hmm. the land was so free. Mm -hmm. The house is no more. And only thing we left for do is to then come and tell we for pay for the land. Oh, so the place was surveyed yes. and you got house lots and yes. so you, your lots were numbered? Yes. But you see, these are not the things that they're saying to people. What they're saying to people is that you folks are on government reserve and they need to remove you because they got to do the road and you're blocking development. But you see, this is what we talk about all the time, viewers. The government keep lying to people. The Minister of Housing, he's lying to the nation. And they like, and I'm hoping that, you know, all of those, all those of you who are watching, that you can share this with other people and let them understand that the government is lying to this nation, telling the folks one thing, and they're telling the nation another story. How can you go in there, do your survey, allot people house lots, give them numbers for these lots, and then you're now telling them that they're squatting. I mean, this isn't adding up. And then you come now with the big bully attitude and you demolish people's homes. You destroy people's farms, destroy their, 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 their livelihood. And, and you expect people to have sympathy on you. But let's continue with Mark. So that happened on Thursday, the breaking down of your home on Thursday. Yeah. And you thought that you would get some some sort of renegotiation with them, um, maybe Friday or Saturday. Yeah. But then something else. What happened on Friday? Friday, they come back and they start breaking down the pens, them burying pigs and all that. So I had to hustle to get the pigs them out of the pen. Everybody run and come for help me to get the pigs them out of the pen before they kill them. So they were killing your pigs too? No, they might get to do all the because by the time they're done with finishing the one, the man before me, all the pigs are almost out. Oh. Because almost everybody are wrong. Because I used to meet everybody this creek good. You're getting all this well. Yeah. good. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anything anybody wants is gift to them and stuff. So everybody's coming to help me. So there's how everybody running in the yard. Start fetching out the pig them and wow. throwing them in the canter. And I end up at the sell the pigs. So it's the canter was your canter? No. I had to sell the, the pigs them for next to nothing. Oh. So, wow. so they never cast it. And I know if I put them, I can't lose them in the yard. 
definitely have go. So they, they killed other people's pigs yeah, while they were I, coming through. God, I them and get yes, them and get because this was everybody running and come and tell me that watching killing um the next man pigs them and burying it. The same the excavator? Pen. Yes. Wow. So from then now I start hustling to get me own house. Because at least I can get something self. Yeah. For myself, because I can't allow all these things to go down the drain. Just I like mean, that, after, after all of that hard work you put in there. Now, you know, viewers, when, when we listen to Mark, this is a young man who is very enterprising, young entrepreneur, who wants to make an honest living. And, and this is what the PPP government is doing to him. You know, we've seen in other areas, people's land, the lands were same squatting. And, you know, I, I should say to us, the PPP were the ones who started squatting, you know. They were the ones who started squatting. And, and maybe they're saying that because they started it, they're going, to, they're going to end it. But this is absolute nonsense. And we would not have seen this happening in other communities. But you know what? Because this is a black community. And this is a community that doesn't give them a second look. So their intention is every time, if you check and see what is happening, their intention is to destroy black communities, destroy the livelihood of black people. And we have to say it as plain as it is. There's no cover up on this. This is what it is. A few years ago, they did the same thing in Boxton. You check black villages. We had the issue in at Bath where we saw residents running with cutlass, hitting um, police men and women, injuring them, breaking people's windscreen. And I've not heard one person being locked up and passed through the court. Police didn't shoot them, but you come down to Mocha where innocent people are. And I was there on Thursday when live rounds were fired when tear gas were fired because people were standing up for what they believe in. People were standing up for their properties. And, you know, it's a shame that the Ghana police force, force has taken on a different mandate. Rather than to protect and serve, they have now decided that they are going to be politicized and they are being used by the politicians to maim, destroy, and kill that's what they're doing. We had just the other day special branch ranks shooting and killing innocent citizens. How much more of this are we going to take as citizens of this country? And you know, the thing is, we must call a spade a spade. When it's wrong, we must say it's wrong, regardless of whether you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, you're a Hindu, you're afro guyanese you're indo guyanese you're Amerindian, we must call a spade a spade. And this is why things can't go right in this country. And you know what? The PPP government, they have succeeded in dividing this nation. And because they know that they can divide this nation and, and, and keep people at bay, that's why they're doing what they're doing. But a day will come. A day after selling out your pits for next to nothing, what, what's next for you? I'm sure you have children. Yeah. Uh, what next? I don't know. All I want is them compensate me for all the damage them damage my things them and compensate me proper for it. Them take almost take me life. I want me life back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need me life back. Them almost take my life. Next thing too, I ask the police them because I use, I got dogs. I smile. I ask the policemen them to see if I bring out the dogs them. I say I got two more dogs to bring out. Then tell me too late. What? Push down the house for the dog them. Wow. I asked them for let and let me see if these dog I carry out. The and, and the, what, what kind of dogs are you talking about here? 
some milk breed dog got a um, rat wilo and pit bull mix wow viewers i hope you're listening and you're hearing what this resident is saying to us police killed his dogs buried them alive while demolishing his home and a policeman would say to this young man it's too late you can't go for your dogs it's too late and we saw them doing that. We saw them breaking the bridges when they recognized that residents were rushing into their homes to bring out their furniture and bring out their clothing and, and whatever food they had in their homes. We saw them breaking the bridges, which would have prevented persons from, from getting access to their homes. If this is not wickedness, again, what more is it? What more is it? And, you know, some people will, will stand there and they will say all sorts of things. And we, we don't mind what you say. Because if this was happening to you, then you would feel how the people are feeling. If this was happening to your family, you would feel how they are feeling. And that's the problem that we have in this country, where we got some fools around the place who want to make all kinds of comments. People have got to live. People have got to earn. People want to live and do honest jobs. And you come here to tell people nonsense? Colin Crow doesn't have to face the market. These people have got to face the market. Colin Crow doesn't have to pay a mortgage. Colin Crow doesn't have to stand on the road and catch transportation. These people have to do that. And you want to tell me that you're breaking people's homes down? It's a shame that the head of this country, the head of state, professes to be religious and this is what he's doing to, to, to people in this country this is what he's doing to people in this country i don't know how some of us will, will see the creator's face honestly i don't know these are people who you are crushing them you know uh my, the operator is showing us what is what has happened in bath and, and we didn't have the, pol the police force you saw them running but you know i think the people in Mocker demonstrated a lot a lot of patience and a lot a lot of tolerance you see we have a police woman there who was injured the people in Mocha they exhibited lots and lots and lots of patience and i must commend them the people in Mocha didn't do this you know look you got policemen running the people in Mocha didn't do that very peacefully the people living there and they tried their best to get an audience with the folks from Ministry of Housing who refused to talk with them. But now you want to tell the people, it's a pity we didn't hear from them as yet that the people in Mocha are hooligans because they, they're quick to label us. They're quick to label us. But that day will come. It's very sad that after having 200 heads of pigs that this young man had to just give them away because he couldn't afford to leave them there and he would have lost everything. After being there for all these years, how long you've been living there? 28, 30 years. Wow. All these years you've been living there and now you're being told that this land is no longer ancestral land, it's government reserve. And, and they want to use the land because but the thing is, when we look at where the road is and where your homes were, I don't understand how you're blocking the development and you're blocking progress. I don't understand that. Viewers, I, I know this is hard for Mark, really, really hard for him. And every time he, he has got to, to talk about this, it, it, it brings a lot of pain, quite a lot of hurt um we cannot continue to do this i know that we have uh, my colleague mp ferguson in 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 studio with us could we bring her on and, and let's have a little talk with her <laughs> colleague adam good night how are you doing girl um, a pleasant evening to you i'm doing just fine I apologize to you and your viewers that i'm in my usual <laughs> comfort zone you know i'm out actually so uh, that's why the kind of different but i'm doing fine 
Alfred. Uh, let me take this opportunity in thanking you for having me here on the program. And since it's my first appearance for 2023, permit me a few seconds just to say happy, happy 2023 for all and all persons joining us here on the mayor year. Be successful and productive with God being the center of it all. Thank you. Well, you know, and if we have in studio with us, we have a young man by the name of Mark with us. And he is one of the residents from um, Mocha. Mm -hmm. He was one of the young men who reared a lot of pigs in, in Mocha. 200 heads of pigs he had there. And he had to just sell them out because the wicked PPP were going to, to kill those pigs and bury them. Your thoughts? Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, I have seen and I will continue to say my thoughts on this particular action by the PC regime. One, it's demonic. And two, they're heartless. Because tell me this, which right-thinking human being will seek to exercise that kind of injustice on your own people? A people that we all refer to as Guyanese. We're supposed to be a one nation, Guyana. One people. We know we're six people, but it's Guyanese. And we all have one common destiny. What is our destiny? We want the, the development of this nation. And what the people... Speak to those people. I can only describe it as an injustice, as inhumane, and that those actions are, I can only categorize as demonic. Because um, Coretta, the Constitution is clear. Article 13 of the Constitution, the, the Cooperative Republic Guyana, the Constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana is very clear. Inclusivity, consultation, whether the people in their, in their estimation, because I heard the Attorney General last night on his program, referring to the people out in the Mocha area, they're as squatters. But let me tell Mr. Anil Nandalal, they're not squatters. They're Guyanese. They are Guyanese. And any right thinking government would have met with those people, where they represent at the local level, at the parliamentary level, to say, well, look, this is what we intend to do. At the infrastructural development, and you know, the the road that we consider is the, you know, the houses are close to this road and this is what we intend to do rather than moving in and bulldozing and bullying the people there is a lot eight or three thousand square miles um correct huh? and each guy needs to have a right to own land in this country and this thing here it really pains me correct to see what really happened to those people out in Mocha sit with the people consult i shared when i was in public infrastructure and we were doing the mandela the um the, the um first mandela expansion yes there were people who planned their businesses along the they had to move 10 feet in to the eastern half of the of, of the um highway there what Patterson and i did we didn't we didn't bulldoze and send machine and send policemen and send workers from public infrastructure to bulldoze those people. We engaged. We sent out the professionals, the technical officers, let them conduct the assessment, came back with the report. This is the report ministers, and we engaged those people. The people went 10 feet in, and you pass there now, degrail, 
dads who used to play his little tire shop. You got a lady selling ship she bread. She will stand there the pig shop. I just normally stop and buy my bread with on the way home. Those people are still playing their trade out there. And what they did to these people in Caneville in Mocha, look, I don't have good words to describe them. But to say that there are a set of demonic forces we got run in this country. Annette, I know that um, we had a budget, supplementary budget that was passed in December, and, and those monies had to be spent by December 31st. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you can remind our viewers what the figure was. And as you as you're gonna do that, we are approaching another budget season. Mm -hmm. You know, correct. I have to remind our people that budget approved in February of 2022 was 552.1 billion dollars. Instead of going to do this, doing that, they share infrastructural work, they doing not to improve the lives, ensure that public servants get a good increase in salary, build more houses, low income houses for, for vulnerable people in this country, ensure the pension, reasonable pension, and share infrastructural works. All right. They came back in June for another 40. I think it's for the five billion or something to the effect, or for the two billion. Then, just before the end of 2022, December 5th, they came for an additional 42 billion dollars, giving the entire budget 600, uh, maybe 650 something, or 640 something billion dollars. You know, Coretta. We need to ask the questions. One, where did the lives of ordinary citizens have changed in this country? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go to you go you go in South Georgetown, see the roads in Albystown, see the roads in Tugville, East Romveld, West La Pena, large house, large areas. You visit these areas. Tell me what we will see exactly what is happening. But you know what, Coretta? All that this government is interested in is what's happening in the private sector. Then concern about the ordinary citizens. What they give public servants, Coretta? 2020 public servants didn't get nothing. 2021, they give them 7%. Then come again 2022 and just give them 8%. One more. One more percent added to the 2021 percentage. Coretta, you take a drive. See what is happening on the on the Eccles Road. See what's mm -hmm. happening along that stretch. Mm -hmm. Hospital. You think the people in South Romvel can go to the the fancy hospital that they're building? No way. No way. You feel that woman, that pregnant mother whenever she takes in, can go to that hospital to get services. No, me and you will not be able to visit the hospital. They got hotels constructed. We hear about them now trying to dispose of Marriott. Where's that? There's more than the hotel. Mm -hmm. the, the building has set of hotels along this corridor. Don't tell me who benefiting. It is not the boy that you have in the studio there, Mark. Mark from Mocker wouldn't be able to benefit from the hospital from the hospital or the um or the hotel. You and I won't be able to go and enjoy a nice uh meal when the day comes. This for the rich and the famous. You understand me? Dinies don't want hotels. They yes, we need improved um medical services. You already got hospitals across this nation. Why don't you take the monies and pump it there? But pump it I, there. And before you go any further, let me say, we have, like you were saying, we have hotels, we have hospitals. And we're looking to build more hospitals. And while we're building more hospitals, 
our maternal deaths are increasing. So mm -hmm. what is the reason why you're building more hospitals? You know why they're building more hospitals? Do you know why they're building more hospitals? <laughs> you know why they're building hospitals and building roads? That's where the money is, that they steal the money. That's where they steal the money, is, Coretta, in I, infrastructural development. You know, I, wonder, I wonder where's Anthony when all of these mothers and husbands and brothers and sisters and children are crying out for their lost loved ones, their mothers, when they go to the hospital, if, if it's not the mother, it's the baby or both of them. Mm -hmm. Talking about building more hospitals to do what? Huh? To do what with? Why can't we use those kinds of funding to improve what we have? But you know, it's like what they did in December. If you look all across this country, they started doing um, roadworks all across this country, spread it out all over. You go to Melanie, you'll see Melanie Main Road. They've dug up the road and it's left just like that. And the residents are being told now that March, until March, their road is going to be fixed. That main road is going to be fixed because they don't have any monies. And that's how they steal the money. They went into some other areas. They cleared power pits. I mean, you had all year to do that. But because you knew that you had to spend some amount of the money in December, you rushed and you do a little dab dab thing and you took the rest. You notice our, our operator is showing there what is happening in Burma Access Road there in Myconi. And this mm -hmm. was done just the other day. Just the other day. And so this is their way of giving contracts to their friends. So I always re remark on it. It's the three Fs. Family, friends, favorites. But people like Mark can't benefit from this. No. Coretta, you know, I have a concern because we're speaking about, you know, the budget of 2022 and the budget to come, which will be um, presented on March 16th, right? But Coretta, if you go back to the estimates of 2022, many of the projects that are enlisted in the estimates for 2022, many of those projects haven't started. Let us look quickly at the Ministry of, of Public Infrastructure, Public Works now, sorry. I recall the goodly bishop when asked about, I think it has to be a, a, a two billion, a two billion for the for it or one billion, between one to two billion for the construction of complexes. And you know, Minister Patterson, former Minister Patterson, asked the hardcore questions. Was the dimension, how many tears you're going up, and all manner of thing, right? So the complexes are basically to take care of uh, I think it's government building to bring government ministry to bring them on the one who fit Coretta, uh, we are now in January of 2022 2023 sorry for another budget well the goodly bishop will have to say to us and to the nation since it's taxpayers money what become of the 1 billion or the 2 billion for the construction of the complex because no works have commenced to date you understand? Then we had the monies in the budget for the gas, gas to um gas to energy project. You understand? I'm trying to remember some billions. We need to know what has become of those monies, whether the project has commenced, because it seems I'm not sure what's happening there to my speak. But sorry. Okay. Good. Yes. The other thing is, I notice the demolition exercise at the Cliff Anderson Sports Complex, commonly known as the Sports Hall. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I know in budget 2022, under the Ministry of Culture, we had no provisions for the cult for um, the National Sports Hall. Even the supplementaries that came after, there is no provision for the construction of the 
National um, Sports Hall. So they will have to explain to us where this money coming from, how these projects are, are, are being catered for. They were not catered for in the budget. And I can speak to many other projects that they said that they were going to do that haven't even seen the day of light. Yep. Another one that comes readily to mind is the new Demeral Harbor Bridge. Oh, boy. That's a big story. You down the coalition government, the beat up of us, call us out and all kind of thing. Came mm -hmm. to tell the people, oh, by X 2022, they will get a new Demerara Harbor Bridge to ease the traffic congestion there between West Coast and East Bank corridors. Coretta? Not one, because that that particular project got major issues. First, they said the lowest bid of 260 million US. They've given them they no objection for that company, I can't remember the name of the company, to get that project. Then this nation learned through the interview conducted by Mr. Barrow Jagdio with Vice News that they no were they're no longer going to pursue the project using the lowest bidder. They're gonna to go to the next bidder. The lowest bidder was 256 point something million US, you know, correct. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the next bidder, the second lowest bidder that they've gone to is 260 million US. No, who you you the, the think Chinese are fools? They think we're idiots. All that this government is doing is wasting our monies, thiefing our monies. That is what they're doing. But and know because of the weak majority in the parliament, they're not being. A, I mean, yes, our role is to hold them accountable. But correctly, you know, we have been asking the hardcore questions, and these people refuse to answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many times they will tell us to check the estimates. The estimates don't give you explanation. All that the ex estimates will give to you is a figure to say, well, look, two dollars to build some road. We need detailed information. What's the length of this road? What's the width of this road? Who are the contractors and the answers? Correct? Budget 2023 will be presented on Monday, January 16th. And let me tell you something. Well, if we had billion dollar budget for 2022, I guess it's trillion dollars coming in. Coming with trillion dollar budget. But, but the thing is, the thing is, how many Guyanese are going to be able to benefit from that? The PPP are not concerned about um uh -huh. Improving the livelihood of people in this country. No, no, I, I want to say to our viewers out there, we have Mark here. And if there's any assistance that you can offer to Mark, we'd be very happy to have that. Mark, would you want to share your, your cell phone number with us? 686-9196. 686-9196. And you can get Mark there at any time. Because you know what we had to do for our folks there? Our folks, they are staying at relative here and a relative there and a neighbor here and a neighbor there. And, and that's how the people in Mocha live. And, you know, they're helping each other. But like everything else, Mark has his children. Mark still has got his life to continue with. And so if there's any help that you can offer at this time, we greatly appreciate that. Um, Mark, I know this is hard for you. I know every time you have to talk about it, it, it brings the pain. But we are going to continue to assure you folks in Mocker that we will stand with you. Um, and I want to encourage people out there. When you hear things are happening in, in other communities, come out and help. Come out and offer some assistance. You know, in, in, in numbers, there is strength. And I'm sure if we had some more numbers there in Mocker on Thursday, what happened in Mocker would not have happened. So let's be our brother's keepers. Let's be our sister's keepers. Um, could you repeat the number for us, Mark? 686-9196. 686-9196. Six, six, nine, nine, six. 
686-986-9196. That's Mark's number. And you can get him at any time to offer some assistance. Um, we are still looking. Um, Mark, what is it that you would want to say to the president of this country or the prime minister? Because I, I'm not, I've not heard anything about the prime minister. Maybe he can speak. But what do you want to say to these guys? I need them to come and compensate with we need the own back. Being comfortable. Being comfortable, go with the with the white people. And we don't know when the people then would tell you that we can't stay anymore. We need the home back. And so viewers, you are hearing the cry of this father, of this young man, this young man who has been trying to make an honest living. They want to be comfortable. If you're going to remove them, find somewhere that is comfortable to put them. Don't tell them that you're giving them turnkey homes and you're going to find a piece of land somewhere. And, and as a matter of fact, was it you that was sent to Low Creek? Low Creek? Oh, no, then, then put, them never tell me, then put it in the um, papers that then got landed at Long Creek. At Long so Creek, we, sorry, yes. Nobody never come and said they're going to take you for see the land there. Gosh. Nothing. You know, I'm happy that we have Mark here because you're hearing all, all these things you're seeing in the print media that they offer them land here and they offer them land and they give them land here and they give them land there. But you're hearing from Mark himself. No discussions was had with them. All they they read that in the news they read that in the newspaper that there was some land available at, at Long Creek. And and nobody in terms of the, the infrastructural work there, nothing was done. So they had to go there to clean for themselves and, and to put up whatever. Is this how people in, in civilized societies operate? I guess maybe the PPP, they are, um, they are part of what we read in the Bible, where you had that, that angel of death that was passing through. Maybe they're the angels of destruction and, and demonism, if, if there's such a word. Um, Annette? What would you want to offer us as your closing remarks? Well, you know, first of all, I want to thank you very much for having me on the program, Advancing the Cause. And I want to let Guyanese know that Budget 2023 will be presented on Monday. And, and you know, I, the leader of the opposition, or the main parliamentary opposition, we were not compelled to participate in the budget consultation. We have constituents and we have constituencies that really need matters or issues to be addressed. And with us not participating in the budget consultation put us at a disadvantage and also our constituents Coretta, I hope and I'm praying that budget 2023 will see one, our pensioners receiving a reasonable, handsome pension for 2023. Secondly, I can't forget the hardworking public servants who keep the agents or the wheels turning in this country. I would like to see them get their 50% increase as was promised by the PPPC during the 2020 campaign. And when we called them out two years on it, we heard it was a photo shot, according to Parag. But we know better because we all saw what was posted on the, the lantern post across this country. Thirdly, I want to see houses built for young people, for public service, for low income earner, earners. Don't tell me you're building a thousand or when I go on the ground, I check in his 50 houses you're building. We are a rich economy, the fastest growing economy in the world. We are envy right now. And with a population less than 800,000 people, look, we are supposed to be rich. We are supposed to be enjoying the good life, like Efren Ali, the good life, like Barrett Jagdio, the good life, like Mark Phillip, 
and all the other installed ministers in the ministry in, in, in the PC regime. Correcta, the time has come also for us to see free education. That is a, that is the other thing we have been pushing as an opposition. They promised free education. It was laced across the lantern post on posters. But now you're hearing, oh, they're giving free education to the gold scholarship. While that would be nice, our tertiary and premier, our uh, premier institution is the University of Vienna. So plug all the resources there. Free up the education so that all Guyanese would be able to benefit from a degree or a diploma or a master or a PhD to help in the advancement and the development of this nation. You understand me, Coretta? I also want to see the Ministry of Education doing more, more for our young people. I want to see the health sector because the wealth of our nation is the health of our people. So I want to see an improved health sector. No more, we shouldn't be in this by economy. We shouldn't see mothers who went in to get their babies. Is either they coming out alive or the child died? No, those things should be the past. Put the money where the money ought to go. Medication, why is it we got shortage at Georgetown Hospital? Why is it we have shortage in medication at the, at the various health sectors, health centers across this nation? Look, Coretta, the time has come for us to put more, and that is what I want to see from budget 2023. Don't bring no public serve, don't bring no private sector budget eh, to us. We want to see a people's centered budget bring down lower the income tax Fresh rate board. lower the vat the the coalition government was able to move that impose 2007 16 percent back from 16 percent to 14 percent and if we did it outside of an economy yep i mm -hmm. know this regime can do it you understand me correcta so I want to see the tax threshold lowered. Since the coalition lowered it in 2019, we never see, we never see another lowering of that tax threshold. Coretta, I want to see the minimum wage move from eight to 1,000 to 150,000 Ghana dollars. We can do it. We, we, can do can that. Do we can do that. As a matter of fact, where we are standing at this time, each family should be able to receive $1 million per month. It can happen because we have the monies. When we look at what Exxon is shipping out from this country, and, and when we look at the, the, the squandering that is happening amongst the, the installed ministers, then we can do that. If you check um, from October to now, you would have seen how many times the head of state is out of this country. He's out more than he's in. But I want to say to us, we people have a major role to play. And I'm hoping that you are ticking off every day the kinds of atrocities that are being meted out to people, especially one particular group of people. And it's not anything that, that you have to hide about. It's a fact. And so, viewers, I want to thank you for being here with us. Mark, I want to thank you again for being here with us. And, and just to remind you, our viewers, if there's any way that you can help Mark or any of the other families in Mokko, we would be happy and we would appreciate that. Do go running out on us. Anat, thank you so much for being here with us. May God continue to bless all of us. Open our eyes and make us conscious of what is happening around us. See you again next week for more on Advancing the Cause. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye. I'm such a fool.